Welcome to this overview series of Esper's new features. Today, let's talk about groups, blueprints, and device onboarding, and walk through an example of how a hypothetical coffee shop chain, Andy's Coffee, uses Esper for creating groups and subgroups to organize their device fleet, configuring their fleet on a group and subgroup level with blueprints, and finally, onboarding their devices into a group, then repurposing that device by moving it to another group. Now, imagine as Andy's coffee shops, we have a number of cafes distributed across the US. Each of these cafes have a variety of devices. Install self-service tablets for our customers to use to place their orders. Line busting tablets for our employees to use at the drive through lines. And finally, our in-store point-of-sale systems for processing payments. Additionally, we have a test lab in our headquarters where we test our device and application updates. How do we go about organizing all our devices and their configurations at this large scale? One effective way is to group them into collections according to their geographic locations, configurations, and functionalities. For our coffee shops, this hierarchy can look something like this. First layer to host our test lab and state-wise content. Next one for city-wise collections. Next layer for specific stores. And finally, our last layer grouped by device types and functionalities. Esper's Groups and Devices section enables you to create this type of hierarchy to manage your devices. In Esper Universe, these specific layers correspond to the directory, which is the root level, parent group level that is required to host devices, their configurations, and subgroups, and up to five optional subgroups to organize your fleet according to your business needs and use cases. Now, let's see Esper in action. When you first log into Esper Console, you will land on the dashboard. If you haven't provisioned any devices with Esper yet, you will see this welcome page. After you onboard devices, your dashboard will be populated with device panels like you see here. In the console, groups, devices and blueprints are hosted in the devices and groups section. To create your first group, navigate to the devices and groups section from the left side panel. Click add and choose new group. Next step is to fill out our group details in this pop-up window. As we are creating a parent group, I'll make sure to choose directory level as my higher level parent. Choose a meaningful group name that aligns with your organizational logic. For us, this means Andy's coffee. Next, I will fill out the two optional fields. Uploading my company logo as my group picture as well as filling out a group description that will help my teammates easily identify the content of this group. When done, click Create. And there we go. We have our first group. Now let's start nesting our subgroups. Click Add, choose new subgroup. The first subgroup that I'll create is Andy's Coffee Test Lab. Here, make sure your parent group is Andy's Coffee. I don't need a description, so I'll go ahead and hit create. Here's our subgroup. Go ahead and click show more and you'll start seeing the hierarchy that you're creating with the parent group of Andy's Coffee and the subgroup of Andy's Coffee Test Lab. Here's an alternative way to create a group. Navigate to the directory level, change your view to a group list, click the ellipses and select create subgroup. Make sure your parent group is correct, enter your group name, and hit create. Now we have the San Jose subgroup. I went ahead and populated our subgroups and finalized the organizational structure for Andy's Coffee. Navigating to the line busting tablet subgroup, check out this nested structure that we have now. Next step is configuring our device settings and assigning those settings at a group level. You can see here that all the groups have the no blueprint tag because we have not yet created a blueprint, which is where we assign those device settings. Let's go ahead and do that. There are multiple ways to add a blueprint. If you haven't onboarded devices yet, you'll see this view at your center. You can click add blueprint here, add blueprint at the top, or click ellipses 
and select Add Blueprint. Alternatively, at a higher group level, you'll see this view where you can click the blueprint and start creating. I'll select Create New Blueprint since this is my first blueprint. I'll give it a specific name because I want to be able to figure out what this is later on. So let's call it Line Busting Tablet Blueprint. When done, click Continue. You will be directed to the blueprint settings. There is a lot of information here, so make sure to check our console documentation to learn more about each of these settings. For the line busting tablets, I know that there are things I want to change in the apps and configuration tab. So let's go ahead and click that. There are two things I want to check here. First one is making sure my device is in a multi-app mode. And the second one is making sure my applications are added to the device. My applications are my coffee menu. Make sure to check the app version. Click add. And the second one is my point of sale application. Check the version and click add. Next, I'll go to the device security section, enable Android debug bridge, and then increase my screen timeout to five minutes. I will then go to the display and branding section and select my company logo as my wallpaper. And the last setting that I will change is the sound. I don't want any sounds on my tablet. When done, click done editing. Blueprints are natively versioned, but you can still commit a message. Save and continue. And since I don't have any devices, I cannot apply this blueprint immediately or schedule it for later. I'll go ahead and exit out of this window. Here we go. Now we have a blueprint that we can view or edit. From now on, anytime a device is onboarded to this group, they will have these settings. Now I want to copy these settings to my kiosk subgroup. I'll go ahead and clone an existing blueprint. Click continue. And then I will select the last blueprint, line busting tablet blueprint. Now, the first thing that I will change is my device mode, because now we have a kiosk device. Additionally, I want to pin my coffee application on the start. Next, I'll navigate to connectivity because I want to disable any Bluetooth connection. After that, I'll go ahead and navigate to the device security section because I do not want my device to time out. So I'll change that to never. There is no other setting that I want to change. So I'll go ahead and click done editing. I will enter my commit message and then I'll save and continue. At this stage, you can see both our kiosk and line busting groups have the blueprints. Now let's navigate to our kiosk subgroup. I will unroll this and check my structure. Here is my parent group, subgroups, and my blueprint. The next step is onboarding a device. I can click onboard device at the center or click add and choose onboard device. Now here, you'll get directed to the six app provisioning method where you can scan this QR code with your device. Click alternative onboarding methods to learn more about the other ways. For instance, you might wanna use Esper device provisioner to onboard devices at scale instead of scanning QR codes one by one. Make sure to check our documentation for all of these different methods. Now let's do a really cool thing to show the power of Esper. I onboarded a device in my headquarters that I want to repurpose. I want to send this device to my San Francisco shop to be used as a kiosk. I will navigate to my device and I will check out what my device actually looks like through Remote Viewer. When I start a session, I will see that this is in my task lab and this is actually the real-time interface of my device. So let's go back to the overview page of the device. Click action, hit move. As easy as this, here I'll just select self-service kiosk and submit it. This action cannot be undone. Once a device is moved, it will be attached to that new group. So now, when I go to the new location of the device under my self-service kiosk subgroup, 
go to remote viewer and start a session. And in a second, we will see what the device looks like. Here it is. Now it actually has the kiosk menu attached to it. It immediately assumed the blueprint settings. Thank you for watching our video. Make sure to check esper.io for more information.